Hi everyone, and welcome to The Vintage Company. I'm Julie and I'm a business historian. And this is the third episode of The Product Graveyard, a series in which I take a look at the products that have been discontinued and why. And today I'm taking a look at the Thor Auto Magic, a hybrid dishwasher and washing machine that was dubbed as a domestic miracle, but ultimately disappeared in the 1950s. This is the story of the Thor Auto Magic. Thor's origins date back to 1908, when the Hurley Machine Company of Chicago introduced the Thor electric washer and wringer. Although it's sometimes disputed, the Thor is often described as the first electric washing machine. And this would be just one of many firsts the company would claim, including most importantly for today's story, the first to bring a combination electric dishwasher and washing machine to market. By 1940, Hurley Machine Company had a new name, the Electric Household Utilities Corporation. It also had a new project, a washer that could wash not only clothes, but also dishes. This combination device would use the same machine but separate tubs, one tub for dirty laundry and the other for dirty dishes. These tubs were interchangeable. For most days, the machine would be a dishwasher, cleaning the daily dishes. But once a week or so, the machine was transformed into a washer by swapping the dishwashing tub for the laundry tub. The company would call this device the Thor Auto Magic. Now, a combination dishwasher and washing machine was not a wholly new concept in the US. Inventor Margaret A. Wilcox received a patent for a combined clothes and dishwasher in 1890. But it appears the Electric Household Utilities Corporation was the first to make this idea a reality. And the company's plans didn't stop at a combination dishwasher and washing machine. They envisioned the Thor Auto Magic having the ability to peel potatoes, churn butter, and make ice cream using a variety of attachments for the machine's agitator. Kind of like the KitchenAid mixer. The machine was also originally mobile, meaning it could move from the kitchen to the laundry room if you desired. Electric Household Utilities reportedly kept the development of the Thor Auto Magic under lock and key. The company was worried that if word got out, another competitor might beat them to the market. There was also the danger that a leak, quote, would not fully explain the product, possibly prejudicing prospective purchasers against it. But in April 1945, Electric Household Utilities began hinting that a different type of washer was coming. Advertisements teased, you won't believe your eyes when you see this post-war wonder, and proclaiming that Thor Auto Magic was more than just a washer, will do several household jobs. Then in August and September 1945, the Thor Auto Magic was given a formal introduction with a wave of advertisements in national magazines. You wouldn't have dreamed that one washer could wash both clothes and dishes, but here's one that will, adds Red emphasizing the Thor Auto Magic as something extraordinary and beyond belief. And the Thor Auto Magic had a kind of futuristic quality to it. Promotional materials told prospective buyers, you'll think you're living in 1960, and comparing the Thor Auto Magic to television sets that bring movies to the parlor, and helicopters you park on the front lawn. But while those technologies might be years or decades away, the Thor Auto Magic was here today, ready to rid you of the most cumbersome washing tasks, not to mention giving you more free time. But after only a decade, the Thor Corporation stopped making the Auto Magic washing machine. In fact, it stopped making any washing machines at all. For nearly 50 years, the Thor Corporation had made washing machines and laundry equipment, and it had made money doing so. That was until 1954, when the company lost $2.5 million, or about $28 million today. The loss was part of a broader slump in the appliance industry, created by increased competition among manufacturers. Before World War II, most companies made varieties of a single appliance. But by the mid-1940s, there were more than 250 appliance makers, and many offered a complete line of household appliances, instead of just one type of product. To stay competitive, appliance manufacturers ruthlessly tried to outdo one another with special giveaways and price slashing. The result was that many smaller or independent companies were edged out of stores, unable to compete with the prices and name recognition of the major brands. 
This left smaller appliance manufacturers with few options. They could merge with bigger brands or go out of business. Business Week magazine called it Judgment Day for Appliances, noting, In the fierce battle that's raging, the casualties are mounting every week. Thor would ultimately be one of those casualties. As appliance sales sharply declined, Thor's top management seemed to be fleeing the company in droves, including Raymond Hurley, the son of Thor founder Edward Hurley, who had been chairman of the board since 1948. In 1954, Hurley unexpectedly resigned, and he was followed by three other members of the board of directors. By early 1955, rumors were swirling that a group of three shareholders had seized control of the company by purchasing 20% of Thor Corporation stock. Among them was Arnold H. Mermont. Mermont was a wealthy Chicago industrialist who ran an automobile parts business. By the 1950s, Mermont was also known as a philanthropist, civic leader, art collector, and angel investor for Broadway shows. Arnold Mermont became chairman of Thor Corporation. And almost immediately, he got the company out of the laundry equipment business. As journalist William Ferris reported, Mermont was, quote, pessimistic about the outlook for many appliance firms and wants nothing to do with that field. But if the Thor Corporation didn't make washers, what would it make? Mermont stated, we wanted to generate profits, but we didn't know where. And so Thor Corporation bought two Christmas ornament makers called Max Eckhart & Sons and K&W Glassworks. It was a strange choice for a former appliance company, but Merriman justified the decision, saying, It's an offbeat but pretty fundamental business. There aren't many homes which don't buy Christmas tree ornaments. Next, Thor Corporation bought a paper company called Ally Paper Mills, making Thor the eighth largest book and specialty pages maker. All these changes seemed to have worked. Net income for Thor Corporation was up to $1.6 million in the first half of 1956, and shares rose from a low of $10.75 to $40. In October 1956, Thor Corporation was officially renamed the Ally Paper Corporation, shedding the last remaining part of its former washing machine identity. Once a vision for the home of the future, the Thor Automagic washing machine has been dead for more than half a century, and it seems like the idea of a combination clothes washer and dishwasher died with it. Because the Thor Corporation left the appliance industry completely, we don't know what would have happened to the Thor Automagic washer. Would it still be around today? Or was it destined for the product graveyard regardless? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this look back at the Thor Auto Magic. If you like this video and you'd like to hear me talk about the history of other companies and their brands, please consider giving this video a like and subscribing to my channel below. Thank you again, and I'll see you next time.